Hello, I'm Bob Morgan. I'm the president of Bob Morgan Woodworking Supplies and the VeneerFactoryOutlet.com. And today we're going to talk about how to bond a wood veneer to a substrate using contact cement. Uh, we sell basically two kinds of wood veneers here at the VeneerFactoryOutlet.com. We do sell a few raw veneers, but those are veneers that I call raw veneers. They sliced right off the tree. But the veneers that we're talking about here today are uh, either paper backed or wood backed. And even if you want to use contact cement on the quote unquote raw veneers, uh, the process is the same. But we're going to talk about the wood backed veneers and the paper backed veneers today. This is a wood backed veneer. It's actually a wood veneer on the back. And front side is the, the good side, the side that you like uh, the grain and all that for your project. Uh, it happens to be an oak veneer here. But the, the wood veneers, the wood back veneers are 3 64ths of an inch thick overall or thereabouts. And they're just uh, a little more sturdier and uh, stouter than the paperback veneers. Now here, here's an example of a paperback veneer. You're looking at the back side. That's the paper that you're looking at right now. You can tell it's, it's about a 64th of an inch thick overall and it's not quite as heavy duty as the woodback veneer. So we have customers that like each type. I happen to like the woodback veneers the best. Now um, we're going to talk about how to use contact cement. So uh, contact cement, generally you're going to use two coats on each surface. You're going to use a coat on the, of course, the back side of the veneer, the paper back or the wood back side. And you're going to use a coat on the substrate. Um, substrate can be wood, which is usually what you're going to be using as a wooden, wooden something that you're going to bond to is wood, generally speaking. It could be an MDF, which is a medium density fireboard, could be a particle board, could be plywood. Um, I like uh, totally nice, clean, unpainted surfaces, but I will tell you that some of the manufacturers, or many of the manufacturers, state right on their cans that you can apply the contact cement to a painted surface. So um, I would just recommend that you give it a little test ahead of time if you're going to do that. It might work just fine, um, but today we're going to look at a raw wood surface, a bare wood surface here. Um, you can use a roller to put your contact cement on with. Um, generally speaking, that would probably be uh, you'd use that on an area a little bit larger than what we're doing today. Uh, you can use also a putty knife, a wide bladed putty knife. You can see this one here's got, got a lot of good use to it. Um, this will help, you know, when you use the, a putty knife on an area. Now, this area here doesn't need the, the putty knife either, but. Uh, if you're wanting to get it smoothed out and you don't think your brush is doing a good enough job, well, you can use something like this. Or you can use just a regular everyday cheap paintbrush. You don't need anything special here. I got about the most inexpensive brush I could find. And uh, probably going to end up throwing this one away because I'm going to use a solvent based contact cement. I recommend the solvent-based contact cements over the water-based contact cements. Um, the water bases have come a long way, but I still think that the solvent bases are better and they stick better and they bond better. Um, they're a little, maybe a little more of a problem with the cleanup and all that, but like I say, in my case, I'm going to throw my brush away. Uh, remember this, that when you use a solvent-based contact cement, the first thing you want to do is you want to get the best one you can find. You don't want to try to save a dollar or two. Secondly, I really like the old-fashioned way of just getting it right out of the can and brushing it, rolling it, whatever you're going to do. Instead of the more that you see nowadays, you've seen a little more modern approach, you might say, with uh, the types that you can spray. Um, I don't like them too much because I don't like the way they go on. Uh, they get a little stringy. Um, I don't think you get as good a coverage. I think that, that by the, at the end of the day, you've spent a lot of money on a, on a spray can where it runs out pretty fast and you could have had quite a bit more 
mileage out of a can of contact cement that you just brushed. So I'm going to illustrate here to you um, how this spray works, um, just so you'll see it. See how it's going on now? You stand back, and it. I never am sh exactly sure if I'm getting the kind of coverage I want, but that looks about right. And it kind of bubbles. And what happens is that, in my experience, uh, the surface, when it finally dries and sets up, uh, is not quite as smooth as what I can get with a good brushed on coat of contact cement. So I think that brushing your contact cement is the, is the way to go. Now, we're going to change our paper out here a little bit and get rid of that mess. show you how to brush the contact cement this time. Now, what you have here, you have your uh, paperback veneer, which is, this is oak, and um, you're going to put a coat um, on the substrate here. Actually, this one's already been coated once. You're going to put a coat on the, on the veneer itself. Notice I have some gloves on because this can get a little bit messy. You're going to want to work in a well-ventilated area, um, probably 60 degrees Fahrenheit or above, and uh, that's not too humid. Humidity can actually, if you have humidity in the air, particularly cold air, can hold humidity. So even warm air can hold humidity. But um, if it's humid, and particularly if it's cold, you might condense some of that humidity on the surface of the contact cement. And if that happens to you, you have just ruined your contact cement. So keep that in mind. Not usually a problem. I don't get too many complaints from anybody about, about anything really, but uh, every once in a while it can happen. When it does, you may not even be aware that your contact cement has degraded somewhat, you might stick it down and might think it's just fine and really it's not as good as it could have been. So that's all it takes is to brush it, put that off to the side, and then you do the same to your veneer. Hopefully this over here isn't going to get on the surface of this veneer. Like I say, two coats on each surface, and you let it dry between coats. Now, of course, the surface I'm doing here is the back side of the veneer itself. It's the paper back side, so um, you just brush it on here. I'm using a cheap brush. You notice it's going on pretty smooth. Some kind of some contact cements don't go on as quite as smooth as this one does, and in those cases, you have to be you have to work with a little more. And you have to be aware that if it gets on it's, and it's not smooth, if you haven't done you know, a good job getting it smooth and it's a little lumpy, well that could transfer through and you might see it on, on the finished side. So, that's one of the reasons I like the wood backed ones better than the paper backed veneers. It's because if you have any problems with your surface your, of your substrate, such as um, maybe it's a little uneven, maybe it's an old table that is splitting apart just here and there in the boards or whatever. Um, the wood backed veneers tend to uh, help to to give a little bit sturdier method to use and they don't telegraph through some of these things. Generally speaking our customers like both kinds. Some, some of my customers will use paper backed and they won't ever get near the wood backed. Some of them uh, it's the other way around. For myself, I'm going to tell you right now, I like the wood back the best. I think you can make more mistakes even with the wood back and get away with it. You notice here what I'm doing. I'm making sure that I'm getting this around the edges. That's one of the areas that you want to be sure you get right is the edges. And that goes for the substrate as well as the veneer itself. So you take your item and you put it off to the side and you come back, you let it dry for maybe Oh, uh, maybe an hour, maybe a half hour. Depends on the contact cement and the conditions. 
Uh, when you come back with your final coat, and put a second coat on here, a second coat on the on the veneer. Go through the same process, nothing different. But this has already had a coat on it. We'll get through this pretty quick. Like I say, you could you could use a roller if you wanted to. So you're done with your second coat. The uh, the substrate that I was working on when I first started already had a coat on it, so that illustrates uh, a couple coats on each surface. And what you're going to do is once you've let it sit for another hour or so. You're now ready to stick it down. Now this is a an item here that that's been uh, two coats on this paperback veneer, and this has two coats on it. Now what I'm going to do, you notice that the veneer itself is bigger, a little bit bigger on all sides than the substrate, and there's a reason for that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just to make it easy for myself this veneer out here like this, upside down, and I'm going to put this, position this right over it, and just put it right on there. So, this is kind of like alchemy because you turn a bare piece of wood into something that looks really nice. This, in this case, this is, this is uh, oak. Now, I want you to realize that by some slip, maybe it was on purpose, but I want you to realize that what has happened here is that right over in through here, we got some contact cement on our, our wood. So along in here, it must have come through a little bit when I was doing it, I must have gotten it from the paper or something. This brings up a good point. When you are working with this contact cement, what you want to do is have a rag and some solvent right in, in the area that you're working. And the reason is if you get contact cement on the wooden surface in an area on that wood that's going to uh, have a finish applied to it, you got a problem. Uh, the finish just doesn't like the contact cement. It doesn't look good with it and you're going to have to sand it and really work with it. So it's way better to uh, stop the problem as soon as you can and that is when you when you have a a problem like this, you get your solvent out with a rag right away and you get as much of that off there as you possibly can. Now I'm going to apply pressure with a roller. This is a, a one inch wallpaper seam roller and you can find these at any hardware or home center. Um, I don't even recommend that you use a J roller because J rollers are probably about four inches wide. This is a one inch wide roller here and you use this to apply pressure everywhere on the surface. Um, think about, generally I recommend you do this when you stand, while you're standing up. I'm sitting down today, but you get more pressure if you stand up. But now, think about, you can put, let's say you can put down 40 pounds of pressure. Now that's 40 pounds across one inch. That's the inch right there where it hits the wood. Now think about putting that same 40 pounds of pressure on a four inch wide J-roller. So suddenly what you've done is you've divided your 40 pounds by four. You're going to only get 10 pounds of pressure in an inch area with that wide roller. So that's why I stick with the small rollers. Uh, some people think that they can use a rolling pin and that makes the problem even worse. You won't get any pressure at all. You think you're putting pressure but you're not. So. Now the contact cement bonds right, right on contact. If you have an inset panel, maybe you have a uh, cabinet door with an inset panel that you want to veneer and 
you can't put it on oversized because what you're going to see here in a minute is because this is an oversized item I'm going to be able to trim right around there and get a perfect fit but if it's an inset panel you just have to cut it ahead of time and fit it and uh, put your contact cement on and when you're ready to put it down you just have to be careful that's all I've done it both ways so remember that the contact cement bonds on contact also remember that it even the bond even gets better with time so even a day later or a few hours later the contact cement is going to be sticking better probably even after a month it's probably better than it was when you first put it down so our veneers trim real easy. This is a paperback veneer. Um, it trims with a razor knife and so do all of our woodback veneers. They trim with a razor knife real nice and easy. So just keep that in mind. It's a pretty easy process. There you have it. And suddenly, look what you have here. You have a perfectly veneered item. This went down real nice, smooth, and flat. Um, just to illustrate, you can cut this veneer with the scissors. You can even cut the wooden, the wood back veneers with the scissors. So I always like to go over it around those edges real good too. The edges are where you want to be sure of. If you have a, a big area, this small area, you can start in the middle and you can get somebody to help you uh, get it positioned correctly and just lay it down nice and smooth. Uh, you can start on one end and go with it. Um, any way you want to do it, just be careful. Now right here I've got a little bit of contact cement and I'm going to have to take some solvent and get that off of there. Then I'll probably sand it and um, it'll probably be fine but sooner is better you don't want it to you don't want it to cure up on you you want to get it off as soon as you can even as soon as you see it if you can so this is a great very very nice piece of oak on this panel here and it's really uh, smooth and ready for the finish and in order to put a finish on this veneer you just you treat it like any wooden surface most of our veneers, all of our veneers that are paperback and woodbacked are already pre-sanded at our factory. If you think you need to sand it, you can. Um, and the big mistake a lot of people make is they don't use a heavy enough grit. They're afraid of it. Uh, you'd be surprised how much you can sand these veneers. Naturally, you don't want to sand through and you want to be a little careful. But maybe uh, you could start, if you had an area you wanted to sand, you start with a maybe like a hundred grit. Um, and uh, you, you do your finishing just like you would any, any wooden surface. For more information on finishing, uh, I have prepared a tutorial and also a video on how to finish our wood veneers. So that's it for today. I'm Bob Morgan with TheVeneerFactoryOutlet.com. Thanks for watching.